What's going on, Savage here? Hope you're having a good day and hope that Warzone's been treating you well. Hopefully, you guys have been getting a lot of W's using the tips and strategies that I've been giving you guys here on the channel. I myself am very excited for Cold War. I'm ready to grind some zombies, some campaigns, some multiplayer, just have something new and have something different. But before we dive into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolf Pack today, also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes. And as always, if you want to find some teammates to play with and maybe get in sync with, Make sure you join our Discord community and utilize the Looking for Groups pages to your advantage. In this video, we will be breaking down some random duo gameplay. And throughout the gameplay, we're going to be analyzing their fighting. We're going to be analyzing their circle rotation. But guys, let me know in the comment section below if you guys are excited for Cold War. I cannot wait to get on it and grind it all day tomorrow. Well, by the time this video comes out, all day today. So make sure you follow me over on Facebook Gaming. The link to that will be in the description below. And we're going to be playing Cold War, Zombies, Multiplayer, Campaign, the entirety throughout the entire stream. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, but here we are spectating my dude Love Nuts and his homeboy Get Aim. Now, with time, we're going to see if your boy's aim's on point and if our dude really loves nuts. But anyway, they landed at this compound. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this compound. These guys did come back from the gulag, but I'm still not a huge fan of this compound. There's no objectives here, so our money situation is going to be very slow. Yes, there's a couple tents and a couple buildings, but the odds of getting $10,000, which is the money you need for your loadout, is very slim. A lot of people will land at these compounds because there's a buy station, which you definitely want to take into account when you're picking an area to go. But look at your entire area. Look at the compound. Look at the compounds around you. Look at the possible rotations. The last thing I would want to do is come here, mostly because this is a spot where people normally don't land because it's lacking money. And we're saying that it's a popular spot that people do rotate to. One, there's a buy station here. So if anybody at farmland, the compound to our north, stadium, people can rotate to this compound from different angles, and they probably will because there's a buy station. So I don't like the fact that we're here with only pistols, trying to get a little bit of loot at a time, because this is a high probability we're going to run into a team, and we're going to be underlooted for the fight. Bro, one of these days, I'm going to say something, and it's not going to happen. And again, I'm not surprised by that. I'm not surprised this team's going to absolutely wax the hell out of our team. Again, this is a spot people rotate to. This isn't a landing spot. This is a rotation spot. And of course, these guys, you know, they have their basic bitch weapons. Um, I, I believe they have their basic bitch weapons. And of course, they're going to come here trying to get the buy station so they can get their loadout and other perks and things like that. And guys, knowledge like that just comes from playing the game a lot. When you start playing the game a lot, you'll start, re you'll start realizing which compounds are good compounds to land at, which compounds are bad compounds to land at, and which ones are great for rotations. If you guys want me to make a video purely on what compounds I recommend you guys land at and which ones to stay away from, let me know in the comment section below and I can get started on that video as well if it's highly requested. Look, this is not a good area to be in. They've already kind of threw the game landing at that spot coming back from the gulag because this compound to our left, it's a very hot spot for people to land at. So if you go here, even if there aren't people there, you're not going to get any money, right? You're not going to get any money. There's a little compound right here. I wouldn't say compound. There's a building right here. You could probably get a couple thousand dollars from maybe best case scenario. But again, not enough to get your teammate back or enough to get your load out. And then talking about the compound up here to our west. Absolutely not. This is also a pretty hot spot for people to go. But mostly it's a great rotation spot because there's usually a buy station there. And then with the high roofs, people love sitting there and contesting all the compounds around. So this is a very bad spot to go to. So again, originally their landing spot probably costed them the game. We'll see what happens. This guy may get lucky. But again, you want to base where you land at kind of solely on your plans to rotate. That's why a lot of people land Superstore because the rotations at Superstore are just drastic. You can go airport, you can go hangars, you can go to the apartments to the south. You can go to Boneyard. You can go anywhere you want. Um, same thing with stadiums. You know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of stadium, to be honest, but stadium, you can rotate to downtown and then hop the promenade. There's great rotations. When it comes to landing on the east side of the map, you got to be very careful of what compounds you pick because the east side of the map is pretty wide open and it's harder to rotate from area to area. But fortunately for your boy, though, he's he, it looks like this isn't even looted, which is very surprising. Very surprising. This is actually one of our old favorite spots to come. We probably landed here more than any other place combined at, in my entire time of playing Warzone. I might do... Oh, we have an enemy coming up. Give me a footsteps, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so now that we have footsteps, now that we're in combat, there are many things we can do. The chance that the enemy didn't hear us is slim to none. And the enemy has already left the building. And again, this comes down to headset. Clearly, this guy doesn't have a headset or he would have heard... The guy has left the building. The guy ran out the left side. We should have instantly rotated to the window and shot down on the enemy. We're going to be sitting here for a long time, I think, wasting wasting a lot of valuable time. 
You can hear the glass breaking in the background. Another sign the enemy's not anywhere near us. Not really sure what you're doing, but if for whatever reason this guy was to push you, a solo or a duo, again with a shotgun meta, he's probably gonna screw us up. So you definitely wanna utilize the windows and the building layout to your advantage. So if he does push up with a shoddy, I'd already be out that window trying to come up from behind him to get a little bit better angle on them. No. It's okay. We'll wait. This shit is bomb, by the way. This shit is bomb. Dude, okay, everyone stop the video right now. Everyone pause the video. Go into the comment section below. I want you guys to compete with each other and tell me how many enemies are gonna be left on the map before we actually move from the spot. How many enemies are gonna be left before we actually leave the spot? What I mean by enemies left, look up here. We're already down 81. I'm voting 65. I'm gonna go with 65. And if it happens to hit 65, I swear to God, I didn't cheat. I'm, th I'm thinking he's not gonna leave this building for a very long time. And look, when it comes to fighting guys, if they don't push you instantly, and again, if he didn't hear it, clearly he did not hear it, he didn't have a good headset, that's fine. But if they don't push you within 30 seconds, they're probably not going to. So at that point, again, waste of time. You guys want to rotate out of the building and back in through downstairs and try to flank the enemy from behind when they least expect it. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, back upstairs. Here we go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's break another window. Come on, break it. Let them know we're here. I, I can't wait to see him shoot, though. With a name like Get Aim, bro, he's going to be a slayer. An absolute slayer. This dude's going to be cracked out on every energy drink supplement known to man. I can I can feel it in my bones, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Get Aim is finally on the move. Explosions going off to the east. We have no idea what's going on, and we're still just rocking it. Uh, correction. Explosions off to the west. Teams are fighting at the compounds over there by the buy station. And we're sitting here thugging it out, trying to loot the compound, trying to find a little bit of money, get our teammate back, but we can't. Why? Because we sat in a room for so long that the enemies that did come up behind us ended up looting the entire area by themselves. They not only scared the shit out of us, but they stole our loot. Hell no. Nah. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. We got a bison. All right. All right. I don't know what we're doing right now. So guys, when it comes to when it comes to anything in this game, don't do this. This is again what normal players do and I'm not hating on anybody. We're kind of having fun, we're taking shots, but at, at the end of the day, it's all constructive criticism. You guys don't want to play like this. You guys want to move out and get loot as fast as possible. Every second wasted is a possibility that you get flanked by two people with their loadout and again with both teammates and you get absolutely shit on. You wanna to try to get your teammate back as fast as possible. Not to mention, we have a free loadout drop over there. He even looked at it. He even ADS on it. He knows it's there. So I'm not sure exactly what our plan is. We have a vehicle coming up to us from Superstore or he's probably driving past us going to Fire Station. But regardless, just be aware of the mini map as always. I don't think this kid's gonna do anything. Vehicle got out at Fire Station. So we need to keep that in mind in case we decide to rotate there. We have three minutes till the circle, so the gas forces us into the circle, and the circle is really not looking like it's favoring us at all. Again, we have a free loadout drop. We're just gonna completely. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and bet he's not gonna grab. Um, and then we got to get safe. Now, this compound to our west, that's within the circle, is a great spot for people to gate gatekeep because of the rooftops. And then you have bank, and then you have this little building right here. You have all these buildings. Th this is like literally a compound of just screw you buildings. He's going to be very lucky if this compound's not already looted. Again, because there's usually a buy station here, this is probably one of the more consistent compounds to have a buy station. Not always, but literally probably 90% of my times playing this game, there's a buy station here. Also, <laughs> what? What? He, I think he got mad. <laughs> also, look, <laughs> I can't even focus right now. Hold on, lost my train of thought. Chill, chill, chill. Also, look, he's sitting here busting out windows and stuff like that and blowing through doors. But look, you can still be quick and efficient without making a shit ton of noise. You're in a compound that's usually pretty popular. And even though we don't think there's people here because there are boxes and things like that, you don't want to risk it. You want to play as if people are always near you. Yes, you play a little paranoid, but that's that's what keeps you on your toes. That's what keeps you that stealthy aspect. You don't want to just go around busting every window out, shooting your gun in the air like you're Rambo. 
that's not the way to play. You guys need to start playing with a little bit of sense of awareness, a little bit of sense of security, and start playing as if there's people camping in this building so you don't just blow through the door and blow through the window. I mean, I'll blow through the doors, but blowing through windows, no, 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 no. Way louder than busting open doors, way louder. You can hear windows breaking fucking, you can hear windows breaking 30 buildings away almost, you know? So just avoid breaking windows if you guys are, if you guys are in this position. <laughs> I do apologize in advance. This is going to be some very slow gameplay unless a team, unless a sweaty team actually drops on them and kills them. They are in the edge of the circle, but they don't have guns to be gatekeeping. I don't know what your homeboy is staring at the sky with a pistol for. That looks real weird. <laughs> is that like some James Bond type shit right there? That would be a good thumbnail. That would have been a great thumbnail. Maybe he has stick drift. Who knows? He drops a plate for his teammate. He may not, might not be here. I don't know what the hell is going on. Oh, he's back. Hey, welcome back to the game. Love nuts. Maybe he's busy. <laughs> Maybe he's busy. But look, okay, let's talk about rotation. Let's talk about what the hell we need to do. There's a giant ravine splitting the circle. If you look on the mini map, splitting the circle into like a ninth, right? It's coming right off and it's cutting our side of the ravine off. So we need to make our way across the ravine and across the railroad tracks and work our way either towards military base or towards hangers this squad right here probably should avoid hangers at all costs because i do feel like they'll get absolutely annihilated looting phase is over looting phase has been over so the idea of them buying a loadout i'll be very surprised if they're able to loot enough buildings to buy a loadout i mean i do like to see the teamwork my homeboy drops them a gun all right let's get it again these guys are waiting on the edge of the circle because of whatever reason i don't know the i don't know the logic behind it i don't know the thought process behind it but it's not a good strategy because we're going to be having the gas push us to safety. And if we get in a gunfight, even though we're probably going to lose it, if we get in a gunfight, we're definitely going to be screwed because we're going to have to fight the enemies and we're going to have to fight the gas. Not to mention, yeah, we have a gas mask, but I'm pretty sure our teammate does not. All right, so they're going to have to move across. They have, they have a four-wheeler. The problem is because we're literally leaving when the timer expires and the gas is pushing us out, as I was just talking about, we're going to have to cross an open ravine where where fuck you mountain is literally staring down on us. So you guys need to be very careful. People love gatekeeping this side of the map from the mountain, for sure. So you gotta be careful in that, not to mention the train and you got other people coming from TV stations. So you run a risk of getting shot from multiple areas as you're crossing the open. So I don't like the fact we're waiting so long. I really hate that. That's the worst thing. That's probably one of my pet peeves is sitting here playing the edge of the circle. Not to mention, guys, I don't see how this is fun for anybody. Wouldn't you guys rather go around shooting at everybody like you're the Terminator and dying with six, seven kills than winning a game with two kills? At the end of the day, the object... Oh, shit. There's a guy right here. At the end of the day, the objective of the game is to win. For sure. First and foremost, I don't care. I don't care what your KD is. The thing that matters in a battle royale, no matter which one it is, how many wins do you have? What's your winning percentage? That's, that's, that's the stat to me that really matters. But again, with saying that... We're trying to get better, right? We're not going to win every game, especially when we're playing this slow and passive. You guys want to get out there, but there is a team in front of them, gatekeeping them on this little mountain. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Weird. Weird. All right, but here we are spectating my dude Zealous and Javi. He's rocking the VLK on the Kilo. Really good build on the Kilo. I love the fact he's using Commando Foregrip. Now, there were questions in my comments. Well, there have been questions in my comments saying, Savage, what type of grip do you recommend for ARs? I always, always, always recommend a Commando Foregrip, except for the AMAX. For some reason, for some reason, dude, the Ranger on the AMAX is just the tits. But uh, when it comes to the Kilo, the M13, the M4, um, even when you want to get into LMGs, the Bruin, the PKM, I always recommend the commando because the commando controls your horizontal recoil your side to side which is more unpredictable than your vertical recoil why because vertical recoil is just shooting your gun upwards so what do you have to do pull down on the thumbstick pull down on the mouse that's it very easy to control that right however talking about horizontal recoil which again is controlled by the commando foregrip is side to side the problem with it is it goes from side to side it's not like it just shoots to the right it shoots all over the place. So I would rather be able to have an attachment on my gun that control that little recoil, that unpredictable side-to-side -side pattern, and, and just pull down on my thumbstick. So that's the reason why I will always tell you guys, except for the AMAX, to run the Commando on your long-range ARs.
But again, different builds for different people, man. It just depends on how you shoot and how you aim. A lot of people love running the Ranger and the Merc on their ARs, and that's that's fine with me if you guys are good with it. Beautiful, beautiful headshot. Love it. Get wrecked. I know I'm kind of moving everywhere, but I just did legs today, so my legs are super sore. Y'all gonna have to forgive me, all right? All right, let's talk about rotations again. Now, this is a massive circle for only 30 people. This is a big-ass circle for only 30 people, so we're gonna have a little bit slower of a game. I know we've already had a pretty slow game spectating the team that we're spectating, but this may be slower if these guys don't get off of the edge of the circle. Dude, there are bounties. There are objectives everywhere. Go for one, man. Here we are mid game uh, based on the player count. I would say this is end game. We have our loadout. We have plates. We need money or we need enemies to fight. And blue is still sitting here looting different buildings, looting the titty towers, looting everything. Oh, here we are too. We're joining right in. We should be taking this time to go get kills. We have everything we need. We really do. You guys really want money for UAVs and things like that or self reses. Go get money. There's a scavenger bounty right at the hangers. Like there's so much shit you can do. You should not ever get to the point when you guys have your loadout, we're doing this. We're just, we're just, you're just sitting here doing nothing. Now, these guys are making it look a little bit better than the last squad, but technically these guys are doing the exact same thing as the last squad was doing. These guys move a little faster. They're able to get a couple shots off. They're able to YY and change the weapons really fast. That's fine, that's cool, but it's all just for show. It doesn't make you a better player. I honestly put these guys in the same category as the other guys because we're playing the exact same way. We need to be rotating to the circle before the gas pushes us there. The reason being is because guess what? Gatekeeping is a massive thing in this game. And what are other players going to be doing to you? They're going to probably try to get on these buildings, either this rooftop or the rooftops at hangers or even the rooftop at the car dealership. And guess where we have to go? One of those. So we run the risk of allowing another enemy team to get there before us and getting absolutely blown away by them. Again, if you're in a stagnant part of the game where you haven't seen a player, move out. They're not just gonna come to you guys. Players don't just come to you, especially when you're walking on a compound, they're probably gonna see you. And most of the time, unfortunately, avoid you unless you're in a super sweaty lobby. But the players you're trying to get easy kills on, they're not gonna come to you. They're gonna be avoiding you at all costs, hiding in a building, things like that. So again, we need to be rotating inwards to get the safety so we can start picking some fights. And again, all we're doing is we're making it look good. We're making it look good by ADSing really quickly and randomly throwing decoys and and doing this stuff but again i always tell y'all don't put yourself in a cubby because what if what if there was a team at hangers and they saw us come in here because we're just running back and forth and doing crazy shit and just all over the place what if there's a team at hangers and they saw us now imagine they're sweaty oh oh bro they're gonna they're gonna come right up in here and throw everything they have at us thermite c4 concussions stickies everything we're not gonna stand a damn chance because we have no way out of this area without leaving this part and putting ourselves in the open I mean, I feel like I said all I can say. I really do. I, I feel like we're just out of things to say. I can't really judge fights because we haven't gotten any fights. This is just going to be a video on what not to do, honestly, because this is just terrible. He's super hyper focused on there. I want to go ahead and throw out a little thing. If y'all were already over at Titties, which is where that gas is at, and you already cleared the mountain, which was exactly what we were doing, I promise to God, no one's coming out of the gas and coming to kill you. This is just playing with pure fear. And again, guys, it's a video game. There's no reason to be scared. You can get mad at it all you want. I believe in passion, for sure. Get mad at the game. Get mad at the lag, the hackers, all of it. Get mad at it. Never play scared, ever. You know, dude, I will, I'd rather put myself in bad positions and get shit on, then, then sit in a the corner. There's no way in hell you'll ever catch me doing this. I just don't understand why people have fun sitting for 10, 20 minutes in buildings. It blows my mind, but this is what we see a lot. This is this has gotta be the majority of players. And again, this is what's prompted me to make this channel or make this series. It's to kind of like force you guys and tell you guys that it's okay to die a lot. As long as you're getting kills, as long as you're trying to improve, as long as you're trying to get a win, it's fine. And I'll talk about rotation. This isn't a terrible idea. I mean, you definitely want to clear Superstore because people, if there is a camper in here and you're playing the outside of the wall, you're going to get shit on by the guy sitting in a building. So you want to clear Superstore, but because it's so big, I would only clear the roof 
And then I would sit on the roof and wait for people to be forced out by gas. And then I would jump off and kill whoever was forced out. But this is not a good spot to be in based on the circle because we are on the smaller sliver in the circle. If you look at the mini map, the street, which is a wide open area, cuts off this side of the map. There's no cover here. You have a little bit of a wall. You have a little sign right here, but car dealership is a better position. The compound to your west, better position. And then, of course, the bridge and the airport area, way better position. We're in the worst position possible. So if I was this team, I'd be trying to make my way to this building so that I could, so that I could one, get the high ground, and two, be able to have more options to rotate. We have nowhere to rotate from Superstore. But they're too tunnel vision on trying to find enemies. They're too tu tunnel vision on looking at rooftops and trying to stay protected. And they're not worrying about the rotation. So unfortunately, I'm 100% sure these guys will die. I would, I would bet money on it. These guys are definitely going to die. There's no way in hell they'll survive this. And because every other side of the circle that's safe has a great compound, and we're on the side of the circle that has nothing, there's no way we're surviving this. Period. We're wasting too much time. We're taking too long. And then, and this is exactly why I tell you guys, stop overstaying your welcome. And here we are on the ledge. I'm surprised if he didn't get shot in the face. Blue just got downed. And we're going to walk the same way Blue just went to. Try to get the res off. Dude, these guys end up winning this game. <laughs> I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> never. Never. Never clear an area while you're in your scope. Ever. I don't care what your field of view is. You're going to be narrowing your field of view drastically. And if you're trying to scan an area, why would you, why would you limit it? If you're scanning, why would you want to like look out of one eyeball? That makes no damn sense at all. Get out of your scope. Only ADS if you see an enemy. There's no reason to do anything else. You can't drag scope an AR. And, 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 and again, in this game, the time to kill is so fast. If you're in your scope and you see them over here and you're going to have to drag scope, your time, your sensitivity is going to be slower than that kid there because he's not going to be in his scope and he's going to shoot you first and absolutely shit on your face. This is terrible. Not to mention he's not in the gas. There are only four enemy teams left, seven enemy players. We know there's an enemy team right on this roof, of course. That's unfortunate for you, brother. I don't like that scope at all. Ew. Ew, that scope. Uh, rough. Rough. Don't hold your breath either. As a sniper, guys, you only want to hold your breath the moment you're about to shoot. Don't just sit there holding your breath because you're going to miss your shots once, once you start swaying. And of course, because we weren't focused on rotating earlier, um, we're in the middle of shooting in one team, and of course we get shot at the other compound over here that's even safer. And in this position, there's nothing we can really do. There's a team sitting in the bus. The bus is not a good position either. That guy's kind of just on the same page as we are. These guys had no plans to rotate. Now, the team that was on top of the red roof, they have the best position because they're going to be able to rotate to the bridge, hit the high ground, and hopefully win the game. And that was the dude in the wetsuit, so we'll see if they're the ones who actually win the game. Of course, Poppy Chulo, again, think, talking about rotations. You're sitting in a bus this whole time. You're not trying to get across. You're going to die. Now you're going to be like, Savage! Even if he wouldn't have sat in the bus, he would have crossed the street. He still would have died. Eh, maybe. But guess what? The circle was a lot bigger, so the players were spread out a lot more. So what, so what does that mean? Well, if the players are spread out more, the chance of them sitting right here watching the open is very slim. You guys want to rotate before the circle encloses. Because again, the tighter the circle is, the more clustered the enemies are. And if you're in a bad position, you're going to get shit on. There's no doubt about it. So I'm not surprised that happened the way it happened. Uh, the team that's on the garage actually has the best position right now, for sure. Now, the team that was on Red Roof, they're still safe. They're still in play. They can get on that bridge. They can get on the rooftop. This is actually the team. Let's go. Yeah, there's Wetsuit Boy. Now, in this position, the the top of airport is your best spot to be in. But again, if there's already a team up there and you gotta you got to make your push based on that, there's a team up there you're going to get shit on trying to get the zip line. So these guys decided instead to rotate to the bottom of the garage and kill the team that's sitting right here behind the tent. I love the fact that he utilized that little crack between the wall and the tent to get the shots off from this enemy who's sitting perfectly still. That too, guys. There's no reason to be shooting your gun if you don't see the enemy. Now, if you're pre-firing the enemy walking around the corner, that's fine. But we were just popping ourselves out of the corner trying to look for the enemy and just spraying in hopes that we're going to hit the enemy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a 2v2 situation. Again, I think these guys may be on the top of the roof. And if they are, it's going to be kind of a kind of a hard fight. It's, you're really going to have to rely on the circle rotating to you to favor you. 
and um, hopefully shit on this team. Now the circle rotates on the other side of airport, we're probably gonna end up losing. It's one thing I hate about the final circle, man. It really just, really just depends. One thing you should be doing, one thing this team should be doing again, when you're in a situation, whether it's in game, mid game, early game, it doesn't matter. When you're in a position like this, and you know there's people around you, you need to be getting on this bridge. Granted, most of it's out now, it just closed, but you need to be getting on this little, this not bridge, this little ramp and kind of peeking up because I guarantee you the enemies are looking for you. So if you can get eyes on the enemies on top of the roof, you can tell yourself, okay, yeah, they're on the roof. Now we don't know if they're on the roof. We don't know if they're on the second floor. We don't know if they're on the first floor. We don't know if they're on the other side of this wall. We have no idea because we're not looking. We're just sitting in a corner just praying. They don't... We've heartbeated 900 times. This circle's so small. Guess what? The heartbeat sensor? Nobody's on it. They have ghosts. You can stop. Now, we have circle favor. So what would I do? I'd get on that ramp again. Stop looting. Get on the ramp, brother. Get on the ramp and see if these guys jump off. Now, he has 10 kills. So he's a pretty competent player. But again, I'm not, not a fan of the moves that he's making. I'm not a fan of this at all. But again, the circle did rotate to, to us, so it, it's it's very probable that we're gonna win this this fight. I like the fact that he utilized the brick wall as cover instead of standing in the open like his teammate did. That was definitely not the play, but luckily for him, we were able to get shots off on both enemies, which gave him the position, which put him in a position to get the kill. So that was a good play. Um, we're gonna, dude, is he gonna get it? We're gonna try to get, oh, we're gonna try to get a final kill with that. Hey, he got it. All right, Zeke, and let's go, brother. All right. Now, look, I know that whole game was kind of rough to spectate. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes we get some good games. Sometimes we get some bad games. But again, there are a lot of lessons to be learned in this video because there's a lot of players that are watching this video that are like, damn, I do that shit too. Damn, maybe I should stop doing that shit. Man, Savage went hard on these guys. Maybe I should cut it out. I'm not actually trying to troll these kids into their grave. Everyone's trying to get better. Everyone's trying to improve. Now, this is a reason why I don't just post 20 kill games because... Yeah, I could teach you a few things off of that. But again, I'm a firm believer in learning from your mistakes and the mistakes of others. So that's why I love posting these gameplays. It may not be as exciting. It may not be as intense, but there are lessons to be learned because clearly the word of Savage has not reached everyone yet. So hopefully one day that will and we can stop posting these gameplays. But until then, guys, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like on the video. And as always, subscribe by hitting the button below. You have a good one. Until next time. Keep on improving. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out one of these two videos. And as always, subscribe by clicking right there. You have a good one. Until next time, good luck in Warzone.